Welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange and today we're talking about five logical reasons red flag laws don't work. And uh, we're not even going to talk about the Constitution. Constitution, Second Amendment. Okay, that's a little bit of a lie. We're probably going to talk about the Constitution one, two, or maybe three times. So with everything going on recently, red flags have been in the news, especially pushed by uh, news media and politicians as a way to deal with the current problems that we're facing. Also, something else recently happened. A universally accepted wise man, Neil deGrasse Tyson, said that this is time to think logically instead of thinking with emotion about how to deal with these problems. And I'm gonna try to stay logical and reasonable with this, as Neil deGrasse Tyson did. He got in trouble for that, and I think he obviously regrets it. I don't, because I think when our founding fathers wrote the Constitution, the amendments to it, the Bill of Rights, I think that's exactly what they were trying to do. They were trying to remain reasonable and logical when it comes to being safe in America. So here's my five reasons. Um, if you have five of your own, if you disagree or agree with me, please feel free to leave those in the comments. Number one. Now some astute people out there might have noticed in the intro I said why they don't work instead of why they won't work. And the reason for that is we already have red flag laws in America, unfortunately, in quite a few states, including California, that already has a lot of gun control laws in place, all of which I believe personally are anti-Second Amendment. Okay, at this point, do I have to say the Second Amendment shall not be infringed? How come it doesn't work there? Basically what they're talking about with red flag laws is a future crime bureau. How are they really gonna predict that a person is broken and will decide to harm other people? We've got lots of agencies in America that are supposed to be looking for the broken people. We can go from the FBI all the way down to local law enforcement. And sure, there are people in California that have because of red flag laws, lost their guns, but that's not stopping people in California or any other state that are broken from deciding that they want to inflict mass damage on many people out there when something's wrong with them and their lives. This can never really work. We don't have any way of creating a future crimes bureau. I know folks out there have probably looked at sci-fi movies and they think, oh, we could definitely do that. But those sci-fi movies have made a huge leap in logic that we can't make. It's very difficult to predict and tell when someone is broken or about to break and go out there and inflict mass damage on lots of people. Now, obviously, there are some people who have been showing signs that they're broken people but that's why we already have these agencies in place. What happened to those agencies? In almost all of the incidents that we've seen, those agencies have completely ignored what's going on. What are the repercussions for those agencies not acting? And why do we actually think that we need to create more laws instead of having those agencies and the people that run them and the politicians that are obviously in control overall of these agencies, making sure that the people who work there are held accountable for their misdeeds when they miss these obvious blaring signs. What are we gonna do about that? A law is not going to fix that or predict exactly who in our society is broken or becomes broken in that instant that they decide to do something horrible to other people. Which leads me to number two. Why take the guns and not the person? Isn't the person the problem? Or are the inanimate objects the problem? And is there something about that in the Constitution that we should maybe think about here? I'll just pull up the 14th Amendment here and read out the due process clause to you. 
It prohibits state and local governments from depriving persons of life, liberty, or property without a fair procedure. And as we all know, all red flag laws do not lay out a fair procedure for the government to seize your firearms. Number three. Why take guns and leave all the other killery, murdery things behind? I'll go down a list of things that people have used to commit mass murders. Things like cars, planes, knives, flammable materials, etc. Why leave all of those things behind when we know that broken people have used all those things and more to commit mass murder? Now, remember I promised I wasn't going to talk about the Constitution, but I didn't really mean it. The Constitution is very important here. The Fifth Amendment to the Constitution further protects property by stating, no person shall be deprived life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. And once again, none of these red flag laws that are being proposed by our politicians on the left and the right consider any of this. As a matter of fact, they don't consider the Constitution or the Bill of Rights at all. Let me go on to read this. Like the 14th Amendment, the 5th Amendment includes a due process clause stating that no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. The 5th Amendment due process clause applies to the federal government, while 14th Amendment due process clause applies to state governments. So I think our founding fathers, when, when they were being reasonable and logical about the future of America, they were thinking about these things that would come into play because they came into play in those times. I know lots of people like to say that the Constitution was written a long time ago and doesn't apply. It applied then as it does now. Number four, how come we don't use red flag laws for all the other causes of death? I'll run down a list for you. These are the top five causes of death. Heart disease, that kills over 600,000 people every year. Can I get red flag laws to stop someone from eating hamburgers? Cancer kills almost 600,000 people every year. Accidents and unintentional injuries is close to 170,000 people. They're not talking about all the damage that hospitals do to you with malpractice. Can we red flag some of these doctors? Chronic lower respiratory disease, 160,000 people. Stroke, that's about 150,000 people. And there's lots of causes for that. Can we red flag nature and our own bad habits? And finally, number five. Can we red flag cops, police departments, all the government agencies, including the military, even the post office that's gearing up to kill people? Or is that where everyone, including our politicians, draw the line? I challenge you to look up something called democide. It's a very interesting thought experiment. It makes you ask the question, why exactly does the post office need its own tactical units? Why do so many other government agencies require tactical units, MRAPs, uh, fully automatic weapons, suppressors, all the things that they would like to take away from us? Why do they need them? And how come we don't have the ability to red flag any of these agencies? So there's my top five reasons of why red flag laws don't and won't work, except to enslave us. What are your reasons? Let me know, make a comment here. I'd like to encourage you guys to listen to us on our podcast channel. It's Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. That's our B channel. That's where we do the podcast Monday to Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern time. Please remember that it's really cool to get the latest sexiest gun out there, but it's also cool to support pro second amendment organizations that are out there fighting every day in every state for our freedoms and our rights. like. GOA, Gun Owners of America, Lola and I are lifetime members, and I encourage you guys to support whatever Second Amendment organization out there that you think is doing the work that you recognize and appreciate. I'm Hank Strange. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to comment. We're, gonna, we're going right back to work on Monday with the podcast and all the other things. We've still been working even though we've been here on vacation. We'll see you soon.